Before you spend too much time editing a pinnacle, you should probably know about a couple of options and timeline settings that will make your editing life a whole lot easier. Timeline settings can be found above the top track on the right side of the software indicated by these icons. If they're orange, they're turned on. If they're white, they're turned off. And you can just click on them to turn them on and off. So I have magnetic snapping turned on. What that means is when I drag a clip around on the timeline and get close to another clip, it will automatically snap to or hug up against other clips when they get close. That's really helpful to make sure that I don't accidentally leave a small gap in between my clips on the timeline. I usually keep that turned on. You also have three different edit modes for the timeline, and that's over here. There's a drop-down menu, and you have three options. You have Smart Edit Mode, Insert Mode, and Overwrite Mode. Smart Edit Mode is the magic wand icon, and that's the default for Pinnacle. Smart Edit Mode is Pinnacle's way of trying to intelligently figure out what to do based on how and where you drag a clip on the timeline. For example, I've got a gap right here, and I need to fit a video clip into this gap exactly. And I don't have any video clips that fit it exactly. I have a clip up here that's too long, but with Smart Edit Mode turned on, when I pull it on the timeline, see it's really long, um, and I pull it into this space, Pinnacle guesses that I would like to trim the clip automatically to fit that space, and that's what it does. It'll take that clip, trim off the excess, and make the clip fit exactly into the space, which is kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to delete that. The other um, options that you have it would be insert mode, which is the arrow pointing to the right. Insert mode is a little different. It will pull the clip and leave it in its entirety, and it will push everything else behind it further down the timeline. So when I drop that on the timeline, it keeps the whole clip and it pushed everything else after the clip further down the timeline automatically. So every time I pull something onto the timeline, it'll push everything else behind it automatically out. That's handy to know about. So I'm going to delete that, and let me show you the overwrite mode. Overwrite mode, um, you've got to be careful with it. Overwrite mode is exactly what it sounds like. You um, Maybe you left a space, but not a space big enough for a clip. If you were to pull this clip onto the timeline, and try to fit it in the space, it's not going to fit. It's going to overwrite everything else on the timeline. So it will not trim your clips for you automatically. It will overwrite anything that's in its way. So if I put that clip here on the timeline, it's going to overwrite everything else. So if you leave an intentional space for a clip, it will preserve that space, and it'll put your clip in that space. But it won't automatically adjust. And if you don't leave enough space, it will overwrite everything else on the timeline after it. So be really careful when you're using the overwrite mode. So I'll get rid of that. I usually keep it in the smart edit mode. That's usually um, the one that works best for me. Although I do change it on the fly, depending on what I'm doing, I can always come up here and change the drop down menu and pick what I need based on what I'm doing. Other options that are really cool for you to know about are things like zooming in and out on the timeline. Sometimes you need to zoom in really close on the timeline and fine tune things. If you hold control on your keyboard and you hit the plus key, which is just to the left of the backspace key, every time you hit plus, you'll zoom in a little bit more on your clips. This is helpful, like I said, if you want to fine tune things or move things in very small, minuscule amounts, then zooming in is your best bet. You can zoom back out by holding control and hitting the minus key, which is just to the left of the plus key. So now zoom back out. Zooming in and out is really helpful when you are trying to line up lip syncing for music videos, for example, and you need to get things just right. Zooming in and out will help you fine tune those things. Um, other things, this video clip is the default way that the video clips come in. It is fitting the space. So based on the, um, the ratio of the clip that you've pulled in, this particular clip, you can see the black bars across the top and the bottom of the clip. And here's the difference, when it's filled, it'll get rid of those black bars and it will make the flag completely fill the screen. So this is the default when you pull it into Pinnacle. It will fit the screen and it will keep its ratio. If you tell it to fill, it will completely fill the screen and get rid of the black bars. So it depends on what you need it for, but you might find that helpful to change that. So to do it, you will right click on the clip, you'll go to scaling, and you'll tell it to fill. And then it will fill the screen. Um, other options, let's say you've just imported 30 items and you realized you have one extra little clip or two that you also need to import, but you don't want to re-import everything, you want to just pull in those two extra little clips. 
open up the folder that has your extra clips and grab the couple of clips that you want to pull in and do a quick export of. So let's just say, you know, these two. So I held control on my keyboard and I selected both. Keep holding control on your keyboard, click and drag and drop them onto your import space. So you've got to have it where it looks like a little plus icon. And then let go and it will quickly import those two clips in addition to what you've already imported. So that's really helpful if you just have one or two little things that you want to import and you don't want to have to re-import everything. Those are my basic tips and tricks for Pinnacle. Hopefully it makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions.